Good afternoon. I actually was getting stressed over there. <laughs> and then I realized that I should really calm myself first because what happened was there's only my, one microphone. It was being transferred from the person who talked to us about stress to the person who was getting stressed. And then what happened was the battery actually ran out. And at the same time, I was telling my wife that I need to go to the bathroom. So which should I do? But anyway, I calmed myself down. And that's the reason we had a few seconds of delay. So um, apologize for that. But good afternoon. I'm Naveen Mahbub. And today I want to talk about kind of my story, but leading to the story, or the one uh, fact that I want to establish is that how do we define the calling of our life and maybe try to see if we can make that, turn that into a profession so that really we don't have to hear, be, be stressed out with life or have extramarital affairs or take up a cigarette or what was the other one I forget. You, there should be a fourth one. What I do when I get stressed, I eat a lot, okay? I eat a lot. I actually had a light lunch because I wasn't stressed out. So uh, I was mentioned that I'm a, 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 a comedian now, and I'm also trained by as an engineer. But if I may ask, then this is a technical institution. How many of you over here, and by a round of applause, are studying engineering because your parents ask you to come? I thought things had changed with so much of information as Bobby Hajaj was mentioning that we're bombarded with so much information and then we can have such diversified careers. But during our time, many years ago, probably when a lot of you were not even born, is that we lived by the Dell philosophy and it seems like we still are. And what I call the Dell philosophy as D-E-L-L, -L, you have to be a doctor, you have to be an engineer, you have to be a lawyer, else you are a loser. And that's why a lot of us, including myself, I put my daughter to bed singing the song of not a nursery rhyme, but Grey's Anatomy. <laughs> Happiest day of my life is not when my daughter says Baba or Ma. She says, anterior cruciate ligament. <laughs> So as it happens in Bangladesh that you're so influenced by what people say, what people say about you, and what the bandwagon is, I jumped aboard the bandwagon and I started studying engineering. Because at that time, we didn't have social media or anything, and we couldn't even call anybody up because any girl we would like is the fact that we may have seen her from like 20 miles away, and the only way to connect with her is to call her on a landline. I don't even know if you know what a landline is over here. And then, for some reason, the father of that girl would always sit in front of the phone. You call the phone, now! Okay. So we heard that if you're an engineer, you're likely to get a great spouse, which I did. Former model, yeah, baby. <laughs> but once we were in engineering, uh, I went to the Bangladesh University of Engineering and Technology, and it was very common. It still is very common for students is to make some extra money as a tutor and mostly as a math student. So I love to teach. I was good at math. I was tutoring, but what was not fun was to go tutoring to some place on a one hour bus ride and then come take another one hour back home. And it took a toll on me. I said, this is not how I want to earn money as a student. So I said, I'm going to sell my body <laughs> in a halal way. <laughs> and at that time, believe it or not, for 10 taka a month, I was, and I know it's hard to believe if you look at me now, I was a member of the Bangladesh Amateur Bodybuilding Federation also. <laughs> so I said, how do I put all of this together? I want to make a lot of money. I want to do it in a halal way. And let's see if I can use my whatever I had from pumping iron. So here's our first how I sold my body to earn some money.
technical glitch okay let's start it again hi nancy hi it's so hot good one and then slip and fell in the canteen madam madam she doesn't get it get it get it you must attend the class applaud if you want to. I'm sure nobody knows which brand we are talking about, <laughs> but we had to bleep up the brand. But the thing is that when I did this TV commercial, I made more money than I would have made being a private tutor for the whole year. But as it happens in Bangladesh is that people start making fun of you. Eh, la, we, eh. You know, at that time when you're in the media, people had this false belief that, you know, you're, uh, you know, that kind of a stuff. So I said, you know, I, I didn't get influenced by all of this stuff. And then my parents would, would say that, hey, Navid, listen, it's okay. Trust me, this is going to diversify your life experience. And I had no clue what they were talking about. So what happened is that I was still influenced by my surroundings as they were making fun of me. But the fact also remained that I made more money out of doing something in a halal way and was kind of moving along. So anyway, I graduate and then it was time for me to go to the United States to get my master's. Now, money was again an issue. How do I survive for one semester? Then I said, okay, fine. I'm going to once again try to figure out how I'm going to do it. And then another opportunity came and I think he's already censoring it out. <laughs> and you will probably know why he's going to censor it, censor it out. Because I did get a lot of flack for doing this ad. So I did this ad, I made money, more money than I would have made as a tutor, tutoring for two years. And it actually covered my expenses for one semester in the US. But what happened when I did this ad, a lot of people said, Navid, chi, chi, chi. <laughs> they were saying that, Navid, you were in this very dirty movie. Who is that girl? What is that relationship? How come you're in bed? Oh, all that stuff. I, and then I was actually very upset as people were making fun of me. But then my parents said, he said, Navid, did you steal? I don't know. Did you hurt anybody? No. Did you make decent money? Yeah. Then why are you bothered? So with that money, I go to the US, get my masters, and it was time to get into a job as an electrical engineer. You know, I'm applying. People have their undergrad from MIT, from Berkeley, and I'm from Boe. Nobody knows that institution. But then I get a call for an interview, and I was quite surprised. Wow. So I go to the interview, and then everybody's interviewing my, me, including my future boss. And then he said that, Nabi, we've met a lot of engineers from the University of Michigan. That's where I did my master's. 
But we never, come, uh, we never came across an engineer who also modeled for TV commercial. I said, now things are falling in your place. So I said, you know what? We're not sure we'll give you the job. We just wanted to see you, that's it, you know? <laughs> So I drove all the way down here because you wanted to see me. <laughs> but anyways, we had a good conversation. I go home, somewhat de dejected. Next day I got a call. I got my first job. The only interview I took, and it was from that company. <laughs> so I'm working. I work for a good 15, 16 years as an engineer, get married. And then I go for the Hajj, the pilgrimage. And I see during our prayers there are so many people whose funeral janaza is taking place and I come back I tell Zara that is our final destiny so from now until then what is my story what am I going to tell my grandkids I was an engineer did a few commercials that's it or is there anything more in life that I could do and at that time I was also doing stand-up comedy and I said fine I'm going to do stand-up comedy so I took up stand-up comedy full-time. 2007, I go to Las Vegas Comedy Festival. I was the only brown-skinned comedian in Las Vegas. I became the best male comedian of the Las Vegas Comedy Festival in 2007. <laughs> then we come to Bangladesh, and things are starting to gel in. And maybe this is the calling of my life. But of course, I've also stayed, gotten away from the corporate life. How do I feed my family? And then I realized, wait a second, it's called showbiz. There's the show part, and there's the biz part, the business part. So that means the show part I love. It seems like it's my calling. It seems like it's my passion. It seems it's like my way of ensuring people are de-stressed. It seems it is my way of getting people away from what is not good. And I'll give you one small example. I was doing a show in Ann Arbor, Michigan at a comedy club. And then after the show, this American gentleman comes to me and he tells me, sir, I love your show. But I want to tell you something. I am an active duty US Army personnel. I just came back from Iraq after a two year tour of duty. And from your comedy, what I learned about you Muslims is not even closest to what I learned about you and your religion during my two years stay in Iraq. I want to thank you. Then I realized the power of humor. That it is not just entertainment, it is also a means to get people away from anything that's bad. It is a means to get people away from stress. It is a means to get people away from extremism. It is a great way to get people out of depression. Even a small example, yesterday, just yesterday, I was at the senior vice president's office of a bank, and we're having a meeting, and an assistant vice president comes, there was some stressful situation, they were almost getting a heated discussion, and I felt very uncomfortable, and I said, sir, how would I leave the room so that you can have your private discussion, and if you're yelling at him, might as well, might as well do it properly and punch him on the face. They both laughed. And guess what happened? This stressful situation went away. So that really is what I believe is my passion in life. But at the same time, I gotta make sure that I do make a living out of it so, so that I can ensure that what I love to do is also my profession. Saki Hassan, one of the greatest cricketers ever, does he go to work? He goes to play. He made play cricket for 12 hours, but he actually had fun. And he also made a lot of good money. Not for the sake of making good money, but the fact that that is an endorsement or a measure of how well he has done his job. And guess what? How well he's done that job is a job that he loves to do. So in the morning, he doesn't go to work. In the morning, he's actually going out to have fun. And that is what I'm doing. Not to say that all of you leave your engineering jobs and become comedians. What I'm saying is that 
If you're doing all these TBS, which I did, I'm not saying go to do TBS, but the fact that when you diversify your experience base, that just no matter what opportunity you get, do it. The more you do things, the more you're exposed to different kinds of experiences. And the more experiences you are exposed to gets you to that point earlier in life, sooner in life, where you define what your passion is, you define what you're really good at, and then you define if that is convert so that that itself can become the calling of your life and also be your livelihood. And a testament of that is that when my daughter was filling out the form, a particular form at her school, there were two points over there. The profession of your parents. At that time, my wife Sarah was a banker. And under mother, she wrote banker. Under father, she did not write engineer. She wrote down comedian. And she said, I'm damn proud of you. Thank you very much.